bones and bone tissue. When you put together the skeletal tissue, you're going to get bones. When you put together all the bones, you're going to get the skeleton. And it has, as you can see in here, functions. One of the functions is support, right? Support your whole entire body with the vertebral column and your limbs. Next one is going to be protection. For example, we have the thoracic cavity, and your thoracic cavity is going to protect your heart. Same thing happens with the skull and the brain. Next one, movement. Bones are attached to muscles, and the muscles move. The muscles that are attached to the bones are going to be called skeletal muscles. Next item that we have is the electrolyte balance. The skeleton has a lot of calcium and phosphate, and that can influence the electrolyte balance that you have in your body. Next one is acid base. Uh, the acid base balance are controlled with buffers, and phosphate is a very important buffer. Since you have phosphate in your bones, it will play a role in maintaining the acid base balance. Blood formation. So inside the bone, you have the bone marrow, and the bone marrow produces the red blood cells. The bones can have multiple different shapes. For example, flat bones, long bones, short bones, and irregular bones. Based on the structure, basically what they are composed of, what they are made of, then we can say that we have compact bone, right here, which is the bone that you have on the outside. And then the other one is going to be a spongy bone, which is the bone that you have on the inside. In this figure, you can clearly see that the outside, all this area, the outside, is going to be compact. The inside is spongy. In the case of long bones, the top of the bone is the epiphysis, the middle of the bone is the diaphysis, and the bottom of the bone, again, is going to be epiphysis. So there are two epiphyses and one diaphysis. This is the femur. This epiphysis is the one that is going to be closer to your body, so therefore this is going to be the proximal epiphysis. And this one is going to be far away from your body compared to the other epiphysis, so therefore this is going to be the uh, distal epiphysis. And the bones also have different layers. The outside of the bone is called periosteum, right here. And the inside of the bone is called endosteum. At the top, you're going to have an, an epiphyseal plate, which is the area where we are going to grow the bone in length. Same way that we have the long bones, we can have flat bones. You can see here, compact, spongy, and at the bottom again, compact. Another name for that is diplo, as you can see here. So let's keep going. So the next item is histology. We need to talk about the cells. There are four main cells in your bones. The first one is osteogenic cells. Osteogenic cells are stem cells that are going to be capable of giving you other kinds of cells, such as, for example, the osteoblast. The osteoblast is the one that is going to build the bone. The next one is osteocyte. Osteocytes are osteoblasts that have become trapped in the bone once the osteoblast build the bone. The next one that we're going to have is the osteoclast. The osteoclast is going to destroy the bone. Not only that, but the osteoclast is going to help us reshape our bones. Next, we have the matrix. The matrix is basically made of calcium, but it's not pure calcium, it's actually salt because it's calcium phosphate, as you can see here. And this is called hydroxyapatite. 80 to 85% of the bone is calcium phosphate, and approximately 10% is calcium carbonate. And obviously, uh, just a few other substances in there, such as, you know, sodium and potassium, but a little amount. The mixture of calcium together with other substances, such as, for example, collagen, makes our bones somewhat flexible as well as very, very, very strong. Let's take a look at what is the structure of the compact bone. You can see that the compact bone is built in concentric structures like this, onion-like structure. You guys see it in here? And in the middle, you're going to have the red, the blue, and the yellow. The red one is an artery, blue is vein, and the yellow one is the nerve. This blood vessel right here will provide the blood that the osteoblasts are going to need. The ones that are going to build this is going to be the osteoblasts, but eventually they are going to get trapped inside this structure, which is the matrix, and they are going to become osteocytes. A better view of that is this one right here that we have in black and white, and this area is called the central canal. Around it, in all these black dots right here, that's where all the osteoblasts and eventually osteocytes used to be. And you see it has kind of like this concentric structure right here, and that's called the lamella. Each black dot is in a space that's called the lacunae, where the osteocyte was, was inside the lacunae. So this structure right here is called an osteon. 
So a whole bunch of osteons, as you can see here, osteon, osteon, osteon. Those are the ones that are going to form the compact bone. Okay, so we keep scrolling down. Spongy bone. The spongy bone is going to form like a spikes. Polyfraveculate. They are called spongy because these spikes are going to form this structure. In between, you're going to have a whole bunch of holes, and that's why the name of these areas are going to be spongy bone. They are very strong. They reduce the weight of the bone right, by having spaces, and also you're going to have lots and lots of that in the areas where the stress in the bones are going to be located. And obviously, what is this space that we have right here for? This space is for us to put the bone marrow. There are two kinds of bone marrow. It's going to be called red bone marrow because that's the area where the red blood cells are going to be created. They produce blood. And you also have yellow bone marrow. The yellow bone marrow is just fat that we have in there. Okay, the next item is bone development. Bones are going to develop through a process called ossification, which is the deposit basically of calcium in the bones. There are two main types of ossification, intramembranous ossification and endochondral ossification. Intramembranous is called like that because it starts from a membrane. Uh, this type of ossification is going to be found basically in flat bones. It goes through a series of processes. There is um, osteoid tissue here in the mesenchyme. Here you have calcification of the osteoid tissue, which eventually is going to give you the spongy bone. Next one that we have, endochondral ossification. Endochondral ossification is basically used for long bones. The endochondral ossification starts with a cartilage. This is inside a man's uh, body, and this is when we are born. Eventually, all that cartilage in purple, called epiphyseal plate, which is going to help us grow in length, will turn into bone, and that's when we are going to stop growing. Fetal uh, skeleton. You can see cranial bones. In this case, they are going to be flat bones. These flat bones obviously are going to originate from intramembranous ossification. And right here you have long bones that are going to start with endochondral ossification. The bone growth in length is going to be done through a process of bone elongation. You can see in this bone, this black line is the metaphysis where the cartilage is going to be found. This is obviously a kid. Why? Because you can see all these black areas where you're going to have the cartilage. It's not an adult because adults don't have these black lines. Bones grow in length because of interstitial growth. We scroll down. The metaphysis where you have the cartilage. Right? Eventually, these areas will no longer have cartilage when everything is going to turn into bone. There's an area transition basically between the bone and the cartilage. And you're going to find different zones. Some of reserved cartilage, some of cell proliferation, cell hypertrophy right here, calcification, and some of bone deposition. We grow in length due to the fact that we have areas of cartilage. We're going to have cartilage until we are, I don't know, maybe 14, 15. We keep scrolling down. Bone widening and thickening. Bone widening happens based on a positional growth. A positional growth is going to grow only on the borders because of the position of calcium by the osteoblast. As this becomes wider and wider, the osteoclast is going to work right here and it's going to start removing calcium from this area. Basically, more and more bone is going to be deposited on the outer layers of the bone, and that's how it's going to get wider. You scroll down. The next thing that we have in here is bone remodeling. The bone remodeling is going to be based on the stress that the bones are going to suffer, meaning the more activity that your bone has, the more bone deposition is going to have. That's the reason why, for example, bones in your legs are going to be thicker and wider than the bones in your arms because we are constantly walking and that stress stimulates more bone deposition. 